Welcome to the So Much More podcast, where we talk with people in the custom window treatment, soft home furnishings industry, and so much more. I'm your host, Seal de Guglielmo. My guest on the podcast today is Shri Sapre, and she lives in Carmel, Indiana, and she is the owner of Folds and Drapes. Shri uses the word journey quite a bit in our conversation today, and it is a journey. Uh, she started her life in India and moved here uh, not quite 10 years ago. Sewing has been a part of her life for most of her life. And when I talked with her about how she learned to sew, I got a very different answer than I often get from my uh, other guests. Uh, Shri moved here to the United States and married her husband. And she had a lot of challenges, but also, as she says, opportunities. She had to adopt, adapt to a new culture and lifestyle. She had had a full-time job and had a change here when she first came. She wasn't working. And it gave her an opportunity to start her own business. And like many of us, she just liked making things and so didn't know what to charge people and has really made an effort to educate herself. Shri speaks quite a bit about how important networking is to her and the people in her area who have been so uh, helpful to her to learn this business and to encourage her to keep going. I hope you enjoy hearing from Shri today. Good morning, Shri. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Seal? I'm wonderful, and I'm so happy you agreed to do this. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me this morning. I'm very excited to learn more about you and your journey. Thank you for having me today. I'm thrilled to join you on the podcast. You know, uh, well, this is I'm my first time, so... <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of my guests, it's the first time that they're on a podcast. Hopefully, most of them feel like it was a good experience when they're done. Um, I promise I don't bite. <laughs> I, I would love for the listeners to hear a little bit about your life. Tell us a little bit about who you are, where you live in the world, uh, a little bit about your life. Yes. So I'm Sri. I'm originally from India. I made my journey to United States in 2014 after I got married. Mm -hmm. And before that, I was working in India in textiles. I always liked to feel textiles. Okay. And I worked with uh, multinational companies who had their um, like parent company in the United States and mm -hmm. a sister company in India. Okay. And, you know, worked for them, like coordinating with both sides, like the vendor side and as well as the parent company side. Okay. Yeah, now I live in Carmel, Indiana. And my business is also in Carmel, Indiana. Okay. It's like a famous city for roundabouts, if anyone has heard about it. <laughs> yes. And yes, it has been a, you know, adventurous journey for me. Okay. So you came to America for your job, your husband's job, what what motivated the move here? Because that's a big change. Yeah, it it was, yeah. And my husband moved to United States for his master's in 2010. Okay. Then he was here for three years. Then he decided to take up a job. And then we got married. I knew him like, we were in relationship for seven years before okay. we got married. Yeah. And that's how, you know, after marrying, I'm like, okay, I'm not going to back, stay back in India. Like, right. You. Okay. <laughs> and that's how I came here. Okay. So in your bio, you mentioned that textiles have been part of your life for your whole life, but you learned to sew from your father. And I don't hear that very often. So please tell us about that. Yeah. My both parents, you know, they are a complete package of talent. That's what. Okay. <laughs> oh, I like that. A complete yeah. Package of talent. <laughs> so growing up, like I used to watch my parents, both the parents, uh, like doing their own things. Like my mom is like excellent cook. 
like she likes cooking she has mm-hmm. her own thing and my dad he is like he loves carpentry he loves sewing you name it you know okay <laughs> and yeah so i used to watch him when he used to sew something on the sewing machine and for both my parents they never like you know okay this is something that you need to learn i'm teaching you that was not we we always learned from them like observing they gave us like a big platform okay this is you know if you if you like this pursue it okay they were like motivation and yes that's how i learned from my father okay. so i never say that he taught me i would always say that i learned from my father oh i like that i love the way you worded that <laughs> So, um, do you have siblings? Yeah, I have an elder sister. She is in India. And did she, did she ever pursue any of these things? Does she sew? No. I always find that so fascinating that it's yeah. some people within a family and not others. Yeah. So we both are like North and South Pole in <laughs> every aspect, you know, personality, uh, liking, mm-hmm. and even like career wise. Yeah. We both are uh, very different from each other, but yeah, so that's how we complete as a family. I would say that you know, okay. everything coming bo- from both of my parents, and like my business side. Now, when I think, I think that came from my grandmother. Like in her days, now she's not here, uh, not there, but mm-hmm. yeah, she had like a small, small ho- uh, home business um, of dairy. We used to have cattle mm-hmm. back in my native place and she used to sell all the dairy products. And that's how, you know, so you have the people in the house never, half of the people in the house never know that she is doing this. But yeah, in the back end, she had, you know, all okay. this going on. So, so you had a view of entrepreneurship from a very early age. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So... Tell me a little bit about the kind of business that you have. Are you retail to the trade? What? Um, tell us a little bit about what your business looks like. Yeah. So now it's the retail model. I work directly with the homeowners. Yeah. Moving forward, I have some plans of expansion and then you know opening it for trade. Mm-hmm. But right now you're to you're retail. Yeah, the retail. Okay. Okay, so t- share with us how your business got started. So you've you've come to a country where it's not your first language, the culture is different, and you're moving in the middle of this very large country um, to be with your husband, who you've actually kind of been separated from over the years because he's been here in school. So you re- that's a huge... I always think of something like that as so brave, Shri, because... There's a, there are a lot of unknowns and I don't always do well with unknowns. <laughs> so I'm, I'm impressed with your sense of adventure and your sense of, or your lack of fear uh, of jumping into this. So tell us a little bit about getting settled here and, and how you started your business. So starting a business, you know, frankly, I had never seen myself like starting a business. I know okay. this, I shouldn't say that right now, but yeah, you know. I always thought, yeah, okay, I'll be working in some creative field or doing something like that. But pandemic was the time, you know, where actually, like before that, I used to take like small sewing projects. Mm-hmm. I used to never charge. Like everyone, like for whom I used to make the projects, they used to be like, oh, you need to charge us. Like we don't feel it right, you know, like you're doing such a nice work. You are so creative, but you're not, you know charging us like this is how you know keeps me going motivated like I am busy with something so I don't need to make money out of this then after pandemic you know it was like okay now things are you know in a different way now Mm -hmm. we need to like if people like this and they themselves want it like okay like like a product like a service Mm -hmm. which I can offer and you know satisfy like the customer side okay let's start it as a business so 2022 in summer I finally registered the business I'm like yes this is the point okay 
I'm starting the business as a business. And that time my parents were like really supportive. They came back from India, like spent uh, the vacation. Like for them, it was a vacation. For me, I see it like, oh, they are here, you know, to support me in right. all ways. Yeah, in all different kind of, because my son was like, he was, you know, three years old mm -hmm. and it was summer vacation, like looking at him full time and also trying to set a business you know, trying to balance everything. But yeah, they understood. They came here. They helped me. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what what kind of equipment did you have when you first got started? And, and what did you purchase as you got started? So when I started, like, not as a business also, I had a sewing machine, like a mm -hmm. home sewing machine. I mm -hmm. always had a home sewing machine. I just cannot, you know, imagine myself without a sewing machine. Right. Yeah. But then once I started my business, I got a, in, I invested in industrial sewing machine, which is a serite mm -hmm. walking foot machine. At that time, I was making a lot of uh, cushion and outdoor cushions. So it basically, you know, started building up. Then I bought a blind hammer. Then yeah okay. and now my plan is to get a zuki <laughs> regular but yes it yeah yeah I'm, I'm amazed at how many of us started our businesses with home sewing machines oh. and and i literally deliberately went out and bought a machine thinking it was going to be great for sewing window treatments and quickly found out that I spent a lot of money and it was not meant for that. <laughs> it wasn't strong enough. It wasn't fast enough. Um, but it's being able to acquire one or two pieces at a time is such, um, it's so exciting when you add those pieces to your workroom. Where is your workroom? Is it in your home or is it outside of your home? It's my, it's in my home. Okay. Uh, one of my bedroom. Right now we are sitting here. Okay. <laughs> yeah and yes so this is a small room and my future plans are like a little bit of expansion mm -hmm. do you think so, you'll expand from the house or do you think you'll move out of the house expand from the house okay so I have bits of spare space which I can you know so this is like 300 square feet which will be okay. like expansion is like around 500 600 square feet yes yeah. so that will give me more room and mm -hmm. there will be no limitation for the projects. Yes. Yeah. There are limitations um, in that kind of space. You can work around them, but they are challenging. <laughs> <laughs> so you, the first couple of things that you made, you didn't charge anyone for it. How did you decide what to charge people? So that is a learning process for me. Like, still is a learning process. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say it was. It is still a learning process. So when I was doing all my research and everything, like starting a business mm -hmm. and charging the clients. Everything. So initially, okay, I'm starting. People are getting to know me. So I will charge something minimum. Okay. Like, you know, like based on the minimum wages or mm -hmm. what you know, like standard, what is being followed in United States or, you know, local standards. Right. So that's how I decided, like, okay, $25 per hour. You know, sounds like, okay, I'm putting that much of effort, you know. No, they were like, like uh, no, not many overheads. Okay. And again, you know, People like my work. That's one side. And also people willing to pay. So that was, again, a research for me, which I'm still learning, like <laughs> spending, spending power of people. You know? Yes. And even after pandemic, like when there was an inflation. Yes. Okay. Still. So. It's, I find the pricing conversation to be something that, continues that continues. as you said a learn it is a learning process not that you've learned it it is a learning process and i i feel like there are so many factors that go into it and you are a member of the workroom and accountability 
uh, mentoring group and and we've talked about the pricing and how right. do you figure out what you're supposed to charge and how do you know how many hours something is going to take you when you've never made it before so i i think again the the bravery it takes to start <laughs> to start a job in this industry where there are a lot of unknowns um but it's still it's always interesting to me uh, especially people who do retail work. Mm -hmm. So what services are you offering to your clients? Are you offering any interior design or is it window treatments and selecting the fabrics or cushions and pillows? Um, where is your service going with that? Yeah. So right now I fabricate, I design, and I consult them regarding fabric, not like okay. the space thing. Okay. But yeah. So uh, being from textiles background, that is somewhere I think that that's my strength. Mm -hmm. Like I know about fabric. I know how they will behave. And uh, color schemes, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think that, yeah, I'm offering them. Okay. And then fabrication, definitely. I fabricate like most of them are like, I'm the only one person right now in my business, okay. single member. So I fabricate. Okay. Do you do the uh, installations, Shri, or do you have someone to install for you? No, I don't do installations. <laughs> me, me, <laughs> neither. Have, me neither. I have <laughs> in, no, no, I don't do installation. Okay. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you getting your business started? So starting my own business was itself a challenge. I would say that. Mm -hmm. because starting a business in a new country yeah. don't know about anything like illegal formalities about yes. business. but yes you know after getting to know after doing some research then reaching out to Indiana Small Business Development mm -hmm. Center they helped me you know with all sort of information which was needed you know okay. to get me started then later I continued my Research, because research is something that, you know, it's never ending. No, you're <laughs> right about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then uh, my uh, research led me towards workroom tech. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I got to know about the custom workroom conference. So the year 2022, I was planning because my parents were here. I mentioned, right? My yeah. parents were here. And I was planning, like, okay, let's go there. But, but I think I missed that timing. By the time I got to know, you know, it was gotcha. it was late, you know. And then that year I couldn't attend. But then later, next year, like uh, 2023 was the year which I, where, you know, I attended. The I was going to say, isn't that when I met you? Was that? Yes. Was yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you're saying, you didn't make it. Yeah. I'm like, but I met you. At the, at yeah. the it was meet. last year. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Then I got to know about the custom soft furnishing resource library. So I met you. That's how, you know. And there are so many resources for our yeah. industry. But sometimes, you know, like, you need to have that right path to reach there. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad, you know, like those steps took me towards all this industry network. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our industry is really very supportive. And I always feel like we never see each other like a competitor, but we, you know, help everyone, yes. you know, yes. to grow and grow in, you know, in their own way but yes you know this is this is a nice thing you know yeah do you have other workrooms close by you yes i do okay. uh, so silk mountains if you know mm -hmm. kathy and mark i do yeah. they're yeah. wonderful people yeah. yes yeah and laura nelson she yes. is in lafayette i haven't okay. like i didn't get a chance to visit her yet but okay. yes <laughs> but how yes, far is yes. that from you so around i think 45 minutes drive. oh that's not too bad okay all right and then oh my gosh okay dana 
Denarius'in um, her business name is Pinchbleed. Yes. Yes. She is like around, I think, half an hour. Okay. Drive, half an hour. Drive. Yeah. That's that's fantastic. And I love that you said that you don't see each other as competitors okay. and you can help each other out. Yeah. I'm glad that I'm part of this, you know, vibrant industry and very strong network, you know. Yes. Yeah, you're really fortunate. I, I know there are areas of the country where there isn't a strong network, and that's fantastic that you have that. I'm curious, Shri, what is your definition of success? So success to me, I would say, like, isn't a destination, but it's a journey. Okay. Oh, like, embracing all the lessons you have learned then staying true to your values okay and yes it is about you know living how you are and with the purpose of you know all the gratitudes and knowing that each step forward is victory in itself you know so you have a lot of things. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Each step forward is a victory in itself. And yeah. some days one step is all we can manage, but it's still a victory. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> What's been the biggest biggest success in your business so far? Or your life? It doesn't have to be business related. What would you say has been your business big? I'm having trouble with that word. What has been your biggest success so far? Like for life, you would say, yes, like coming here to the United States where I never thought that, oh, like even when I met my husband, I never thought like after seven years, I'm going to, you know, right. be on the other side of the world. Right. <laughs> yes. So that's how, that's the success of my journey. Like my journey has, you know, got me from where I was to where I am like okay. I will say like I, like in the childhood I was just so naive and innocent mm -hmm. later the next step was being to that rebellious phase of my life right and after that it was like okay loving wife which led me to a proud mother mm -hmm. Yeah, and now as an entrepreneur, no. So yeah, this is this is what I call success. <laughs> and, and this in your bio, when you you refer to it as your journey, and I love that. Not not it's not talking about success in your bio. Just this is your journey, and I love that. So I really can't wait to hear the answer to this question. What happens when you make a mistake? Do you consider it a failure and how do you handle it? Oh, like with failure, it's like, you know, yeah, like you're in that zone of creating something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And in one moment, you know, it's just a click and oh no, what a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just felt that in my gut as you said it. <laughs> Yeah. So by the time you figure out that, okay, you have failed at something, you know, it's just like, get that Buddha, Buddha thing into you. Okay. It's time to come. You know, you need to, you need to calm down, understand the situation. You know? mm -hmm. So step back, wait, clear your thought process. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, failure comes with the opportunity to learn. So, yeah. It so comes with the opportunity, to... but do you take it? <laughs> yes, definitely, definitely. Yes, I would say that, yes. Okay. Because at, at, in this time, I know, you know, learning is something. And at every step, I think everyone should practice that. Never stop learning. Right. 
so whatever it comes positive negative you know think it as a learning opportunity and i really take that as a learning opportunity yes <laughs> okay all right i like that so you mentioned wanting to expand where do you see yourself in 5 years so next 5 years i see opening to the trade mhm mm definitely and again improving my skills what right now what i have you know every day is working towards something is mm -hmm. better best and getting towards like accomplish i wouldn't say like accomplish but yeah you know take yourself to that stage where you're comfortable with every every sort of thing you know mm -hmm. with the environment with the work with the client and build that trust for your clients yeah that's such an important part of it too mm -hmm. is the trust um it's so interesting when i look at some of the conversations on the forum or on um the facebook groups about the way some clients question or whether the clients are designers or homeowners mm -hmm. and i think how lucky i've been that i have great trust from the designers that i work with and they don't question me um i we i just had a really funny conversation with one of my designers she said to me i wouldn't want your job for all the money in the world and i said what do you mean and she said all the details you have to think about and she had chosen um we had worked with this one embroidered fabric before but she put a velvet on the back of it and it was not an easy velvet to work with and she said something she said you had to figure out this you had to figure out that i said yeah but you have i i don't want to be an interior designer there's so you know you need to know hard surfaces you need to know contractors the the detail level in that kind of work is just not anything i'm good at or want to do but she literally laughed because when she gave me the fabric for the pillow she goes oh thank goodness this is your problem now and it's not mine i'm like but this is just pillows it's like it's not the whole room we're worried about so it just cracks me up how we all see those things as very different but i'm very fortunate that she trusts me and and there've been a couple times recently where she sent me a fabric swatch and she knew that she had to check with me first and on the first one it was like um no we're not using this one it will not do what we want it to do and she's oh, thank you and that's i i feel like it's one of the reasons when she gets my estimates and invoices she just writes me a check because she knows that she's getting what she's paid, what she has paid for so yeah it's it's always interesting to me that that trust level um have you experienced any hesitation from people because you're new in the business or do they just not know that you're new in the business no i haven't seen hesitation and both ways like okay. even it is back to off you know being okay. new or not new no okay. i haven't seen hesitation the reason i would say is like sometimes client in itself they don't know like you know I have learned this in 3 years that you need to educate your client. Yes. And not for our reason but for their own benefit, you know. Mm -hmm. Cuz sometimes clients do have that thing, okay, we want this, we want that, but always what you have in your mind, you know, sometimes there can be limitations which cannot get into the practical situation. You know, right. or, you know, so that's why I think that you know, when they see me explaining all these small things, yes, they're like, okay, she knows what she is doing, right? You know, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, yeah. So now it makes me easy, you know, it makes right. the journey easy from start to end, and I'm very fortunate that I like whoever clients I have worked with. they were very cooperative they were very supportive okay and understanding and again when i say educate the client not every client wants to learn from you because oh <laughs> i'm paying you 
Yeah, just do so, it. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. But you know, you know, that is also a part where I feel like, okay, they are ready to, you know, listen to you, understand mm-hmm. what exactly the process is and cooperating with you. Yeah. It's funny because sometimes I do when I'm talking through a job with this one designer in particular, um, I can see sometimes her eyes just glaze over because I'm going into details that she doesn't need. And there are times when I'm just saying it out loud to figure it out. And it's not like I'm actually trying to explain it to her. And there have been a couple of times like, you don't need to listen to me. I'm just working this out. <laughs> but but at the same time, yes, she knows that I know what I'm talking about. And so it, it, there is there is a certain part where she's like, just do it, Seal. I don't really need to know all that. <laughs> I want to jump in and take a moment to thank the sponsors who make it possible for me to bring you the podcast each week. My sponsors are people in in the industry that I have personally had a connection to, purchased from, or used their services. So it makes it really easy for me to tell you about them and the great things that they have to offer. Because I feel so strongly about education in our industry, I'm thrilled that as the owner of the Curtains and Soft Furnishings Resource Library, I can use the resources of the library to help support the podcast. The library hosts the industry's largest curated collection of educational resources for the custom home furnishings professional. Membership to the library gives you access to a wealth of downloadable reference materials, videos, live events, as well as a community of support to help you develop your design, sales, and fabrication skills, and to grow or start a business. Join the library today at csfrl.org. Angels Linings would like to invite you to become part of their family. With reputable lining comes exceptional customer service. Trust them with your linings like I do. You get two Tootsie Pops with every bolt of lining you receive. For smiles, satisfaction, and a sugar kick all around, call Angels Linings at 1-800-450-9300. Six, eight. The Workroom Channel is the premier online training provider for professional fabrication skills. Go to theworkroomchannel.com to browse the selection of anytime access courses created by industry experts. Watch detailed demonstration videos, download companion materials, and participate in private course discussion boards with your instructor and classmates from around the world. Start your course path today at theworkroomchannel.com. If you've listened to the podcast, you know how much I've learned from Michelle Williams. And I think most of my guests have mentioned taking at least one of her classes or gotten coaching from her. Her business is Scarlet Thread Consulting. Michelle loves to work with creative business owners to help them understand all aspects of their business and to use their gifts and talents to make it profitable. Michelle is a strategic profitability coach certified in the Profit First methodology, and she can be reached at scarletthreadconsulting.com. I've also mentioned my membership with the WCAA, and I'm now a gold level sponsor, where education, networking, visibility, and industry discounts are just a few of the benefits that are offered to our members. The Window Covering Association of America is the only national nonprofit trade association that's dedicated to the window coverings industry and the dealers, decorators, workrooms, designers, and installers that make up our membership. Join today at WCAA.org. WCAA, where you are never in business alone. I've also been extremely fortunate to be able to work with Merrill Y. Landis LTD. It's a family-owned and operated custom workroom and product distribution company to the trade with over 70 years of experience. And in addition to their custom work, they offer a wide variety of decorative drapery hardware. They offer Stout and Flare 21 fabrics. They have Roman shade operating systems and assembly kits. They have motorization and workroom supplies, and they serve both designers and workrooms. And you can check out the MYL Advantage at MYLLTD.com. I'm curious about your education, Sri. Um, you talked about doing a lot of research and you've gone to Workroom Tech. 
Um, is there, have you focused on learning how to run a business? Have you focused on fabricating? Are you trying to do both? How are you managing your education in that respect? And what's been maybe one thing that's had the biggest impact on you? So learning wise right now, business, I did. Uh, so when I was in college, I had this subject called as business management mm -hmm. you know that time I was wondering why I have to study business management my specialization is textiles I want to know <laughs> more about textiles um, but yeah it was part of curriculum and I loved it now when I when I see you know oh that helped me a lot because I learned that and I don't have to spend my time like you know more time on learning this side, but now I okay. can focus to improve my skills, which is actually going to, you know, help me being more productive, more okay. efficient. So I would say right now, learning is more into learning new skills about fabrication, okay. installation, say, because that's something which I haven't touched it yet. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, even about learning new technology, Yes. Because this is going to be, you know, how much ever you have a physical fabric, you know, in your hand, sometimes you need, it's not sometimes, always you need to have that techno technology yeah. with you so that, yes. you know, you can, yeah, put it in front of the client. You can present it in front of the client and mm -hmm. you know, show them how it is going to look and basically envision their uh, yeah project so yes so learning skills in fabrication technology okay so i'm curious about this what is your favorite technology oh ai okay how um, are you using it so ai i would say not in fabrication or in designing right. uh, you know but yeah uh, so I like to mention over here that uh, when I start building my uh, started building my website. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know anything about it. Like, okay. I'm like, okay, but yeah, now it's your business and you need to have a website, you know. So yeah, I took few classes, online workshops. And it helped me. And then AI was something where I used AI to, okay, like AI have made your life easy, I would say, you know, mm -hmm. like from creating content, from creating, because that is a need, you know? Yes. I, I think that is need of today's world. And how much ever you know you can write literature and literature somewhere you know there are limitations yes and yeah AI helped me during my website building and website okay. management and when I mentioned AI it is like there are a lot of things to learn you know yes recently I came across with the WCA program of mm -hmm. and I'm like yes that is interesting Yes, Interesting. I, I watched that webinar and I'm going to be having someone on in September um, in the library who's going to do um, how, how to use chat GPT and AI in our business. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that's fascinating to me. And I'm I excited it, for that webinar. Well, I, I use it a little bit. I, I took one of the, the woman who's going to do the presentation. I took one of her very short classes and it made such a difference for me so quickly. Um, but I feel like it's like much of the technology that we use today, it's changing very quickly. So trying to learn how to use it and use it authentically so that it helps me, but doesn't do my job for me because I'm not interested in that. But but in in learning how to take what I need from it. And, and like you said, to make my life easier so that I don't spend three hours writing two paragraphs. <laughs> yeah. I have 
been through that thing, you know, just yeah. holding my pen and a paper, <laughs> thinking, okay, I need a content for my website. I need a content for my, you know, social media. I need yeah. to, you know, make something. I need to write something. And no. <laughs> uh, yeah, write, is writing is not one of my stronger skills. Let's put it that way. <laughs> And I've gotten a lot of help from AI that way. I'm curious to hear about in your workroom, Shri, what business items could you not live without? What are the things you you are the most excited to use or that you use the most? How many you want me to mention? <laughs> well, we'll just do three. <laughs> <laughs> Sewing machines, sewing machines, sewing machines. <laughs> I've never gotten that answer before. <laughs> <laughs> but yet. Okay. I have this connection with sewing machine. So much that, okay. No, if I don't have a pen in my hand, I'm okay with it. Because okay. parts are in my hand. Yeah. If I don't yeah. have a sewing machine, how am I going to create something which I know, which I have in my thoughts? Yes. And, and that's actually one of the things I saw about AI is that it frees us up to be doing what we'd rather be doing. And that is at the sewing machine. And that's something that AI can't do for us is create the window treatments or any of the things that we're doing. So if you enjoy creating so much, I'm curious to hear do you ever sew just for yourself or is your sewing geared more towards your business? Do you have time to sew for yourself? So mm, I love sewing. So yeah, I enjoy sewing like apart from the business as well. Mm -hmm. After starting the business, it has been like more for the business, like, you know, making samples for the workroom. Okay. That way. But earlier, I used to make clothes for my son. I used to sew clothes. Then even, like, I have friends around, and they had this baby, like, when the baby was born. I, like, first thing what I would make is a baby blanket, like a quilted blanket, uh, you know. Then making all those baby, teeny tiny baby garments. Yeah, I love I that. just <laughs> did that. Um, my... <laughs> Best friend is about to have two grandchildren, but um, her two oldest sons are expecting um, close together. And um, they had a baby shower and I made little jumpers for them. Little, um, I think it was called an adventure romper. And it was so fun. To, I had not made anything like that in such a long time. And it's small. Um, it was a little challenging because it's small, but it was also very rewarding because it didn't take me that long to do it. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I get that. And, you know, this is something, you know, small, small things when you make and when you give them, you know, you put everything what you have. Yes. And then that big smile. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I love doing that. Yeah. Creating joy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Shri, what is your favorite thing to make in your workroom? Say pillow covers. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Pillow Why? covers. And for the reason, like, they take less time than making a whole coated panel, like a panel. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can, even if it is a, like a 14 by 14 or 16 by 16, like whatever size you choose, there are a lot of options, like, you know, adding a trim, adding embellishment, just create different, with the same size, with the same pattern, you know, just keep creating different things. And, okay. You know, I like I, that, you know? Yes. I do hear that about pillows frequently, that people enjoy it for exactly that reason, that you really can create a work of art in a pillow. What do you not like making so much in your workroom? Hmm. Okay. I think working with linen fabric. Yeah, that's a challenge, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think second or third project, which I took, yeah. 
third project was a blend of linen and oh my gosh being new to this industry and you know you just started working and this is like you have to make six panels i was just thinking oh, if i if something goes wrong how am i going to fix that that was right. going but luckily i was able to manage everything and, okay you know, <laughs> yeah okay and it but was yeah. a blend so that's helpful <laughs> yeah <laughs> You you probably had more anxiety going into that than people who don't understand textiles very off very well. <laughs> Client, like she appreciated me. Oh, you created such wonderful drapes. They are they look so nice. I'm like, okay, thank you. And I was like, <laughs> the big smile in my yeah. head. Like, oh, you don't know how, yes. how I walked through all this, but yeah, you don't need to know this. No, yeah, you don't need fine. to know, but I know. <laughs> What do you do extremely well? I learn well. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So learning is something, you know. Even at school, like when like teachers are someone who has to teach me, it is very difficult to grasp that rather than, okay, you just, you know, go in and open seminar or open thing and people are they are talking and you know you need to get I'm not saying that they are not doing a great job but it's I think me you know that's how I learn okay like observing and then learning okay yeah yeah I love how many different styles of learning there are there's so I mean I hear people in our industry talking about that and it's sometimes like well I read how to do this and I'm like I love to read, but I do better if someone shows me how to do something. <laughs> what do you not do so well? Oh. <laughs> Only There's one no. thing, not a list. <laughs> Only one thing. I'm not a particular like, people person. Really? Huh? I would not have guessed that about you. Yeah. So, you know, while I like connecting with clients and sharing my passion, mm -hmm. I often find myself, you know, more drawn toward working on a project, you know, rather than engaging too much. Okay. That's right. Like, okay, I know, like, this is part of my job. Okay. I'm doing it. But yes, I prefer like, focusing more like creating things mm -hmm. hmm. yeah I would not have guessed that about you 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 might do really well if you if you are to the trade because then you can spend more time on the fabrication end of it than the design end of it so far Shri what do you love best about this business I like the industry network okay our network yes <laughs> Like earlier also, when I was working with companies, mm -hmm. I, have, I have not seen this kind of network, you know? Right. And very I've well, like, that even, over and over. Yeah. yeah. Whenever, like, even, like, uh, I think uh, at WCA, you know, our chapter meetings also, I have seen everyone helping each other. Mm -hmm. Not even a bit of hesitation to share your things. Right. So this is something, you know, great, you know? You don't get to see this everywhere. Okay. And for new businesses, I would say this is like a warm welcome, trying to make everyone comfortable. Yeah. Like um, CWC 2023, you know? Oh my gosh. I was like in a shell. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> but... Betsy, she approached me. What a, how how would I say like, without making me uncomfortable, she she you know tried to help me and right. you know, so this is something like oh, you know, like I like this you know. Okay. I've never thought about it. I'm mm -hmm. like oh, everyone is so much experience. I'm just a newbie. How how I'm going to take this you know? But yeah. Like, I, I I love hearing <laughs> that and I hear yeah. it frequently I, and I really do believe it's unusual in our industry. Yeah. 
and everyone everyone whom i met at a, a custom workroom conference i would say i have the same experience with everyone mm -hmm. like even with you we we never you know spoke to each other but the way you approach and you made me comfortable you know i never thought you know like <laughs> like before before going i i was talking to my husband and i like oh there will be people with like so much of experience and they are they have you know been in the industry for so many years how am i going to take that you know <laughs> but no that change and even for new people who whoever you know are planning on starting the business or you know they want to come in this industry i would tell everyone that the network is really strong and everyone is there you know to help mm -hmm. you right and i think from the perspective of someone who's been in the industry for a little while i was so excited to see so many new younger faces um and and there are a lot of people that do this as a second career so they're not as young as you are but they're still new in the industry so it was that to me was so exciting like oh another new face this is wonderful because what we do is so important. And as we already pointed out, AI can't do this for us. Like we <laughs> need newer, younger people to be coming into this industry. And I think that's one of the things about CWC that I enjoyed so much last year because there were so many faces that I did not recognize. And it was like, this is great. I'm loving this. All right. So what do you like least about this business so far? I haven't thought about it you know okay so so that, that's great that means there's yeah. nothing that you're you wake up and go I have to do this today <laughs> yeah so I think this is like nice it's it's going good <laughs> okay that's fantastic Shri what about you would surprise people I don't know if I should say this <laughs> but this is something really surprised I absolutely love to sleep <laughs> Yeah. I love that answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, despite of like this, you know, busy life and being a mother, you know, or a business owner, where you know you need to always be on your feet. And but yeah, I like to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, the good news is, the more I hear about it, the more important I realize sleep is. So good for you. <laughs> I have this one ritual, like. I take nap every afternoon, like okay. for an hour. Yes. And, you know, this is like a rooted tradition from the city where I have come from. You know? Okay. There are whole cultures that embrace napping. And I don't think that we do here in the United States. And, and it's funny that you say that because I can remember... Uh, I'm one of nine children and my mother would take a nap a lot of afternoons. I'm sure we exhausted her, but she would literally curl up on the sofa, turn her back to us. None of us were little, by the way, and just fall asleep in a house full of noisy children. And I thought that poor woman must have been exhausted all the time. <laughs> but napping is supposed to be really good for you. Same time, you know, I also have that thing that I can work straight 12 hours. Okay. Yeah, not, I'm not a, like a early riser, but okay. throughout the night, if you give me like, okay, this is something you need to complete in morning. Okay. okay. I can do that as well. Okay. So probably, because, the thing. probably because you're getting enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Shri, you've talked about some of the challenges and about being more introverted. Have you ever thought about quitting this job? No, I haven't thought about quitting because the journey is so challenging, you know? Okay. And it's all, you know, who I am. My passion towards textiles or, you know, towards our industry. Mm -hmm. like, no, no way is going back from there. Okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. good. I like that answer. <laughs> Shri, in what ways do you think you're resilient? I would say I'm resilient to change. I would think so, with everything that your journey has taken you to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
even like in personal and professional life everything like for me like moving to united states from a place like like i still remember the day when i came to united states it was christmas day 2014 christmas okay. day yes and so when i started my journey from india it was around 84 85 degrees over there like fahrenheit and when i came to united states it was like 18 fahrenheit 18 degree fahrenheit i'm like oh my god <laughs> 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 then like shifting from you know from my full time job mm -hmm. which i had in india to being like not working like like for almost 9 years it took me 9 years you know to start mm -hmm. back to my career again and yes so i'm resilient to change okay that's a great one So you mentioned your website and social media. I will put uh, links in the show notes, but how can people find you? Yeah. So you can find me on Facebook, which is my page is folds and drapes and same as Instagram. Mm -hmm. Instagram handle is folds and drapes. Okay. And I'll put links to that for everyone. Um, Shree, I want to finish up by saying, first of all, this has been such a delight for me to get to know you better. And I appreciate that you took the time, but if you could give some advice to someone new in the industry or even a, or obser observing some of us who have been around for a while, any advice you might have for us? So I'm too young to give this advice, but yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> never stop learning this would be like the first thing like mm -hmm. i follow that and i think that helps you in on every step you know your professional life your personal life that is going to help you and don't be afraid to take all sort of risk you know mm -hmm. any sort of risk embrace failures as a learning opportunity <laughs> <laughs> i like that one embrace failures as a learning opportunity <laughs> and finally it's like remain passionate and dedicated to your craft whatever you are doing keep continue doing it you know well i can sense that passion in you shri and it real honestly it has been an absolute delight for me to talk with you this morning thank you so much for sharing your time with me and I can't wait to see you at CWC this year. Oh, thank you so much, Seal. This was a great experience for me as well. Okay, good. I'm glad. And it wasn't a learning opportunity because you didn't fail at it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Shri. I really hope that you enjoyed hearing from Shri today. I just love her passion. I think she's a very wise young woman and I loved getting that validation from her that our industry is still a generous one and a kind one and one where we reach out to help one another as she said without hesitation again it was just such a delight to speak with her and to see her enthusiasm and hear her excitement and her hope for her future in this industry Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day.